In today's Number Corner lesson, we will be introducing the October Calendar Collector, Race to the Millions. Let's think about the number one million, the one with six zeros after it. One, zero, 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 zero. Try to picture one million people, one million crayons, one million grains of sand. How much space would you need for one million people? Definitely a large space, maybe a whole mile, maybe more. How much space would you need for one million crayons? Not as much space as you'd need for the people, but definitely pretty big. How much space would you need for one million grains of sand? Probably not that much because of how tiny the grains are. You think you could fit a million grains of sand in your hand? To give you perspective of how big one million really is, Broncos Stadium holds 76,125 people in it. Is your mind blown yet? About how many Broncos stadiums would hold 1 million seats? Pause the video and write your guess in the comments below. Then resume the video to see if your guess was right or even close. The answer? Drum roll, please. You're looking at the answer. Over 13 full stadiums. Is your mind blown yet? One million people holding hands could stretch across 60 miles. How far is 60 miles, you ask? If you want to guess on this one, I'd love to see your comments below. Let me show you how far 60 miles is. It would be as far as Franktown Elementary is from Boulder, Colorado. 60 miles would take over an hour of driving in the car. That's how many people one million is if they were standing side by side holding hands from Franktown to Boulder. Yeah. We could probably cover the floor of our classroom with one million crayons. They're so much smaller than people, so they take up less space. And we could probably easily hold one million grains of sand in our hands. That's how very, very minuscule each grain of each grain of sand actually is. One million can fit in our hand. Tiny squares. Now I want you to estimate how many squares you see. Really look at this with me. What do you see? Pause the video and make one comment about what you notice regarding these tiny squares. Do you see that there are squares within squares? There are 100 tiny squares within each bigger square, and there are 100 of those squares. If you multiply the 100 big squares times the 100 squares in each square, you will find out how many there are. You may have thought about it in terms of the bigger squares. Notice that there are 10 bigger squares in each row. That means there are 1,000 tiny squares in each row. And there are 10 rows, so 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. And if I know that, then 100 times 100 is also 10,000. How many tiny squares, sheets, which is really the 8.5 by 11 that you're looking at, paper from like the printer, how many of those tiny square sheets would we need to show 1 million tiny squares? A hundred. Yeah, if I took a hundred pieces of paper and laid them all out on the floor, you would need 100 of those sheets like this to show you one million tiny squares. I want you to imagine how much space we would need for 100 sheets of tiny squares. We'd probably cover our classroom. We may even need even more space than that. This month's calendar collector activity is a game called Race to the Millions. Our class will be divided into two teams. Teams will take turns spinning a number so that one day a representative for one team spins a number and the next day a representative for the other team spins a number. And each time the representative chooses whether the number represents a number of hundreds or hundred thousands, ten thousands, thousands, hundreds, or tens. Each team can use each place value twice during the month. For each turn, the student adds the new number to his or her team's total 
and marks off which place value they used up. At the end of the month, the team with the higher total wins the game. Here is the Race to the Millions record sheet that we will use to keep track of the place values each team has used. Each time a student representative takes a turn, they will cross off the place value they have used. On each day, only one team spins, adds, and records their number. For example, on day one, Team Red took a turn, spun the spinner, which landed on a four. They chose to use up one of their hundreds place values. And then on day two, Team Blue took a turn, spun the spinner, which landed on a two there. And they chose to use up one of their tens place values. When both teams have had a full tur turn, they will compare to see whose total is bigger. And we use the greater than symbol here because 400 is greater than 20. The open mouth of this symbol always points to the bigger number because the alligator's hungry. Red won this round because they are closer to the goal of reaching 1 million. But you never know what they're going to spend tomorrow. As a class, let's commit to friendly competition and good sportsmanship. Pause the video and write one comment about what that means or choose from one of the examples, examples I'm going to give you to remind our class in the comment thread. Friendly competition and good sportsmanship means set a good example. No yelling or complaining when things don't work out the way you wished. Follow the rules. Some rules are silly, but in sports, they are there for a reason. Even if you disagree, follow the rule. Let's agree to follow the rules. Have fun, seriously. Don't focus so much on winning. Losing is a part of life. We don't succeed at everything. Plus, losing teaches valuable lessons and helps us to mature. Everyone gets a chance. Let's promote fairness and support everyone getting a turn. Always show respect to the teacher. Complaining and arguing is not only disruptive, but sets a terrible example and makes the whole activity not very fun. Respect the other team and treat your opponents with respect and dig dignity, congratulating them when they win a round and being humble when they lose. Respect yourself and your own team. You should be proud of who you are in my class and feel good about yourself because I want you to get the most out of this experience this month. The next day you're at school, your team will take a turn, and we will take a turn for every day during the month of October. So we may have to catch up on a few days with weekends and days you aren't at school. We will have a Race to the Millions record sheet hanging in our classroom so that you see how each team is scoring for each round as we make our way each day closer and closer towards our goal of 1 million. We will update the calendar collector for each day that the calendar the collector is not the featured number corner activity. And remember, only one team gets a turn each day. I'm really excited to start this game with you guys. And see you soon.